Hi, I'm Carl Lazus for CNN 10. Always great to see you. We're starting our week in Japan, where a typhoon recently did what forecasters were afraid it would do. It made landfall right near the Japanese capital of Tokyo. On Saturday evening, Typhoon Hagibis roared onto the Izu Peninsula. Its maximum sustained winds at that time were around 90 miles per hour, the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane. It had weakened considerably from where it was last week as a super typhoon at Category 5 strength. But Japan's government says Hagibis still brought record-setting heavy rains and windstorms, causing flooding and landslides to the region southwest of Tokyo. And as of last night, there had been 31 deaths and 186 injuries from the storm, according to the Japanese public broadcaster NHK. Hundreds of thousands of homes lost power. More than 230,000 people were evacuated as Typhoon Hagibis approached. And as the storm passed, 27,000 members of the Japanese Self-Defense Forces were called on to help rescue people. And that's in addition to the police, firefighters, and members of the Coast Guard who were helping. Hundreds of flights were canceled. So were several matches in the Rugby World Cup, which is in Japan this year. Officials said that had to be done to keep players and fans safe. But critics said Japan should have had a plan in place to reschedule games since they were being held during Japan's typhoon season. The nation's government expected Typhoon Hagibis to be the worst storm to hit Tokyo since one struck there in 1958 and killed more than 1,000 people. 10-second trivia. Which of these items contains more than 2,800 diamonds, 269 pearls, and 4 rubies? Imperial State Crown, Mask of Tutankhamun, Peacock Brooch, or Crown Jewels of Ireland? These jewels, in addition to 17 sapphires and 11 emeralds, are on Britain's Imperial State Crown. It's traditionally worn by Queen Elizabeth II at the ceremonial state opening of Parliament. But the 93-year-old monarch says she can't wear it while looking down, like at a speech, for instance, because the crown is so heavy it could break her neck. Still, the speech will go on. The Queen's position is mostly symbolic in modern-day Britain. The United Kingdom's governing power is largely in the hands of its Prime Minister and Parliament. But the monarch is called upon from time to time to consult with political leaders and open new sessions of parliament. That happens Monday. It'll include the Queen's speech and an extraordinary display of British tradition. The state opening formally commemorates the beginning of a session of parliament. Steeped in tradition, this elaborate ceremony showcases British history, culture and contemporary politics. The state opening is the only regular opportunity to unite the three elements of legislature, the House of Lords, the House of Commons, and the Queen. The occasion is marked by a colourful series of events. It begins when the Queen travels to the Palace of Westminster in a state coach, escorted by the household cavalry. The Imperial State Crown, a supreme symbol of her authority in the land, it gets its own carriage too. The Queen arrives through the Sovereign's entrance and then enters the robing room where she puts on the Imperial State Crown and Royal Robe. From there, she enters the Royal Gallery and joins the State Procession. The Procession enters the Chamber of the House of Lords where the Queen takes the throne. At the command of the Queen, the official known as the Usher of the Black Rod is dispatched to fetch MPs from the Commons. The door of the Commons is slammed in the Usher's face then has to knock on the door three times to be allowed in. This is to symbolise the independence of the House of Commons. Once inside, Blackrod summons lawmakers to the Lords. Those MPs, the Blackrod Usher and Commons officials all make their way to the Lords Chamber, where they stand in the back. Members of the Lords and guests including judges, ambassadors and high commissioners will sit in the Lords Chamber. My Lords and members of the House of Commons, then the Queen delivers her speech to members of both houses. Written by the government and approved by the Cabinet, the speech lays out policies and proposed legislation for the new parliamentary session. The Queen then departs the Lord's Chamber, prompting the new session to start. Both houses then begin to debate the content of the speech. Members will continue debating over several days, looking at different subject areas each day. Anna Stewart, CNN, London. At the Artistic Gymnastics World Championships on Sunday, American gymnast Simone Biles took home two gold medals, one on balance beam, the other on floor exercise. That happened a day after she won gold on vault. You get the sense that winning medals really isn't news when it comes to Biles. 
What is, is the fact that she just became the new record holder of world championship medals. Biles now has 25. The previous record, set by Vitaly Sherbo of Belarus, was 23. Biles hasn't won every event she's competed in. She finished fifth in the uneven bars on Saturday. But as she prepares for what she calls her last Olympics, Biles is already carrying history on her shoulders. Simone Biles is arguably the greatest gymnast of all time. And why not? She's the most decorated American gymnast ever. She's won the most gold medals at a single Olympics with four. And she has more medals at the world championships than any woman or man. She's a class above. Biles was on a school field trip when she was six years old when she was first introduced to gymnastics. Just 10 years later, she made her debut at the world championships in 2013. Three years later, she made her Olympic debut in Rio. She wowed crowds and teammates alike, and now one particularly complex twist during her floor routine has been named The Biles. She debuted it in 2013. Another one came on the vault in the 2018 World Championships, and now she can add two more to her resume. At this year's World Championships in Stuttgart, she debuted two new moves. First, on the balance beam, her double-double. That's two flips and two twists. And second, a triple twisting double tucked or a triple double during her floor routine, which will now be known as the Biles 2. It remains to be seen just how high she can ultimately fly, but one thing is for sure, this 22-year-old phenom will look to dazzle crowds and take home gold at next year's Olympics in Tokyo. The phrase hunted to extinction doesn't only apply to species that humans have killed off. There's a mammal in California's Channel Islands that was almost hunted to extinction by birds. The animal is the island fox. The only place it's found in nature is the Channel Islands. It's the largest land mammal that's native to the islands, but it's about the size of a chihuahua, making the island fox one of the smallest members of the dog family, Kennedy. About the size of a house cat, this wily little creature is the smallest fox found in the US. But even at five pounds, they are the largest land mammal on the Channel Islands off the coast of California. This is the island fox. Island foxes are descendants of mainland grey foxes, but have grown smaller over thousands of years to adapt to the limited resources of their island homes. In recent years, a chain of events caused these little foxes to be federally listed as endangered. Bald eagles once lived harmoniously with the island fox, never considering them as food. But then, the less forgiving golden eagles arrived in the Channel Islands and began preying upon the island fox, hunting them to near extinction. But through a recovery program, the golden eagles were relocated and the island fox population is on the rise again. This is the island fox. A stealthy lion's sneak attack gets a 10 out of 10, but don't worry, we're not going to show you something getting eaten. Unless you count a snippet of fur, maybe, from Mama Lion's back. She's watching two of her cubs amble in straw at the Scottish Zoo when BAM! The third baby, the troublemaker, takes a bite. Thankfully, Mama doesn't overreact or take revenge, because if she had and we had told you the video wasn't violence, well, we would have been lying or at least kitten around. Our critics would have pounced. Sometimes they do that just because. But I'll agree there's something roarable about a sneak attack. It's just a main thing to do. I'm Carl Azus, and that is CNN. <laughs>